So everybody watching, this is um, a video that was done. It's an eight minute video and it kind of sets the scene. So for those of you who aren't quite sure um, what this issue is about, if you like in my mind, everybody knows everything about the Thule Elkin point raise. But what I've discovered is that um, it's a big learning curve for a lot of people still because it is. So this is a video that some friends made. It's really, it's an eight minute video. It plays out the whole scene and I hope you enjoy it. The tule elk is one of these miracle animals uh, that came back from the edge of extinction. It was down to, according to some people, as few as two animals. Other people say 20. But it was almost gone, the subspecies of elk. And now it's back. It's a miracle. The signal achievement of the Park Service in its obligation to restore ecosystems has been the, the triumph of the tule elk there. This is the signal thing that they've done, and now it's in danger. For the first time in the history of Point Reyes National Seashore, they're being killed by policy. Should they stay or should they be killed? New plans up for debate over the future of Point Reyes National Seashore, and specifically, what to do with the park's Thule elk. It's limited to 120 adults. And so if the number goes above that, the Park Service plans to shoot those elk. Uh, this is a bill to continue sustainable working dairies and ranches within a portion of the Point Reyes National Seashore. Cattle are the number one source of water pollution, ocean pollution, and biodiversity loss in our own national parks. There's no park like this anywhere in the national park system. You have wild elk, you have bobcats. I saw one two days ago. Uh, badgers, mountain lions, you have coyotes, all looking down from the peninsula to this amazing marine ecosystem. We have this incredible richness and, and uh, in one place, and um, it's rare. My father was one of the really the fathers of Point Reyes, so I'm sort of a brother of this national seashore. I watched the park being formed. My father was at the signing of um, the, the legislation. He was there in the Oval Office with President Kennedy as he signed. And it says that historical, cultural virtues of this national seashore shall be maintained to the extent that they are consistent with maximum preservation of the natural environment. You, you cannot have maximum preservation of the natural environment with commercial cattle there. This perpetuates a forced marriage of two completely different ideals of land stewardship. It's, it's preservation versus production. Pass the bill HR 6687 as amended. The opinion of the chair, two thirds being in the affirmative. Rules are suspended. The bill is passed. And without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Without objection, the title is amended. HR 6687 essentially laid out a couple different things. It acknowledged continuation of ranches out at Point Reyes National Seashore. Uh, it also would have put into place the taking, the killing of the free ranging tuna elk herd at Drake's Beach. Now in Point Reyes, which is theoretically some of the most protected lands in the world, and it has a species that was brought back from extinction, 
and now you have the national park planning to kill the elk in order to protect the cattle industry. This is an animal that's already outnumbered 10 to 1 by cows, which is contrary to all good park principles and law. There was a specific mandate from Point Reyes that this park would be used as a place of restored tulia. And that is now being ignored by the Park Service because of pressure from the ranching community who don't want to share their cattle grazing with Tulio. We're coming up against like twin challenges right now in the environmental realm. Two that are, that are front and center. You see them in the news. You see them in academic publications all the time. The climate crisis and this biodiversity crisis. Climate change. Experts say that we have until 2030. The biggest factor is destroying natural habitat and land for food. Livestock causes more greenhouse gases. If changes are not made, there will be irreversible damage to the planet. The degradation of habitat, the fragmentation of habitat would have negative implications for the climate and for wildlife. The elk are more natural and they fit into the natural environment. Uh, they don't uh, have the impact on the environment like cattle, which can have a much greater impact and it shows on the fence line there. Uh, on one side, there's big impacts, there's erosion and that sort of thing. On the side with the elk, it's a very healthy system with natural vegetation uh, thriving. We're at this point now where we need to really change our mindset and that's not gonna be easy because the cattle are everywhere. I understand and respect those businesses, but these are on public lands that are protected it's time to make that change. There are very few places that are ecological hotspots that have such dynamic biodiversity and microclimates, and Point Reyes is one of them. Point Reyes National Seashore is home to 15% of California biodiversity. There are hundreds and thousands of plants and animals here, some found nowhere else in the world. And the tule elk, which is endemic to California, they used to number 500,000 and they were hunted down to almost extinction in the 1800s. When something goes extinct, it's forever. We thought the tule elk were extinct, but now we have the second shot, there was some left. And it's been one of the greatest conservation success stories in California. It's a bad idea to expand agriculture in Port Reyes National Seashore, it's a violation to allow commercial, private gain in a national park. We need to pr preserve the things that have always belonged there, and that's badgers, and that's coop, and the tule elk. That's what a national park is about. The national parks are our masterpieces and we're striving to do everything we can to get the right resources and the right experts in the right place at the right time to make sure we can restore those masterpieces. When I'm confronted with potential for such completeness as I see out at Point Reyes National Seashore, I don't want to tell my kid that I had the opportunity to do everything I could to protect it and I didn't. Point Reyes National Seashore is worth protecting. Okay, thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. It really does give a really good overview of exactly what's going on in Point Reyes. It's absolutely horrifying that the National Park Service that's supposed to be, in, in I think most of our minds, protecting these animals and preserving the land on which they live, they're actually doing exactly the opposite. Yeah, so I, worked at Point Reyes National Seashore as a volunteer. I worked there for three years, restoring the coastal dune ecosystem. And, and before that, I had just enjoyed the park. Um, I, I wrote out this whole speech about how I fell in love with the park, but I think the video kind of spoke a lot of why I fell in love with the park and why lots of people fall in love with the park. But 
I, I just want to emphasize that I was out there for years, very intimately restoring wildlife. And so when I heard that the national park system was going to kill the elk, I actually didn't believe it because they were, um, they awarded me for volunteering and restoring the ecosystem. So I, I actually couldn't believe that they were going to kill the elk. And when I started to look into it, um, I realized it was all true and I, I met people who were in the video like Julie Phillips and some people who are not in the video like Laura Cunningham and um, and I just it really is quite shocking but the more I learn about how the park system runs I'm actually not shocked anymore because they are following orders from their administration um, and they you know they're very much embedded with the cattle industry. The cattle industry was here before the national park. The park service is basically run by the cattle ranchers. So it's not surprising anymore to know that the park service is planning to expand industry and kill these elk, so. That is just absolutely horrifying. And I know that you've been out there fighting this battle for quite some time, Diana. I know that you have in the past um, tabled at World Veg Fest events. So I know this is a battle that you've been fighting for quite a long time. And, uh, and I really appreciate your efforts. And it's, um, as you can see, because of your hard work, you've really drawn a lot of attention to this particular issue and getting the attention of uh, global organizations like In Defense of Animals. And I know that you all recently uh, collaborated on a massive, massive demonstration that was actually at po Point Reyes. And um, I, I would kind of like to talk a little bit about that and what in, went into that, uh, what were the objectives and where are we at now? Yeah, so um, we, basically what happened um, most recently uh, with the, our most recent demonstration was just overwhelmingly supported um, and I think the main flashpoint for that is that for a while now for I, I believe every year um, there have been proposals suggested and what to do with with the park um, and they they presented this range of options um, a through f and um, the, the public wrote in, actually the public wrote in in droves in support of taking the cows out of the seashore and protecting wild animals, as you would expect would be in line with the park's mission. Um, so 91% of over 7,000 respondents said that they want to see that happen. Um, and unfortunately the uh, park a couple of weeks ago um, said that it was actually going to um, expand ranching and exploitation of the park in many aspects um, and possibly even allowing slaughtering of animals um, and bringing in other species which are going to create more conflicts with wild animals um, when predators predate naturally on, on invasive species that come into their habitat. Um, so it's, it's really the worst thing that they could possibly have done and um, People are absolutely outraged by it. So um, in defense of animals for elk, um, Tree Spirit Project um, and Rancho Compassion, um, Miyoko's uh, Sanctuary, and um, supported by dozens and dozens of other activists and organizations. There you go. Um, decided to um, hold this demonstration and people came out overwhelmingly. And what we wanted to do was to go into dairy farms that are on um, Point Reyes National Seashore. So the, the dairy farms take up a third of the wilderness area that has been preserved for the American people. So for-profit ranches and they're these humane, um, organic, sustainable. Um, you couldn't believe the labels they're slapping on it while they're killing wild elk. And um, almost 300 people turned out because it's just so outrageous and really um, obviously we're talking here at um, the World Veg Fest so it really bears repeating that it's when you're when you're when you decide to go vegan um, you're not just saving cows pigs sheep chickens you're saving wild animals too because time and again um, in defense of animals is is involved in um, 
protecting wild animals across across this nation and across the whole world and we see it time and again it's ranchers who are wanting to kill wild animals they're killing wolves in washington they're killing off wild horses in um, colorado nevada oregon and now they want to kill a, a very rare native wild species of animal that's endemic to california for ranches. This is in the Bay Area. We can't let this happen. And I'm just so grateful to everyone who has been really passionate about it, who's turned out together. We have a fantastic coalition of um, really strong Bay Area organizations working on it, including Diana and many others. Um, so uh, if you want to, if you want to take action yourself and you're wondering how, um, you can do it right now by visiting um, idausa.org slash elk. So idausa.org slash elk and um, also, please follow us on social media because we are going to be organizing more actions, um, more very dramatic actions, may I add. Uh, so please get involved. We really need people power here. Um, we've got to shame these politicians into doing the right thing. Sometimes that's the only thing that works. And uh, and I know, Diana, when when this when this issue first came to my attention, it was uh, primarily about uh, the water restriction to the elk and they were dying of, of thirst. And uh, the fact that they're on these public lands, on these national park lands and don't even have access to water uh, during one of California's worst droughts a few years ago. Uh, how, many, how many elk were killed at that time uh, because they didn't have access? Yeah, so there, there was a drought during the height of the drought between 2011 and 2015. Um, there is a herd. I'm actually going to share a map. I'm all about the screen share, but I think <laughs> photos help. Um, let's see. It's true for an issue like this. I think it is really, it's better explained when you can really see a graphic. Yeah. So, um, just so people know this, um, this is a map of California. So San Francisco is right down here and then Point Reyes is this big peninsula. Um, right here. And then in this next screen, so this is just a closer up of the Point Reyes Peninsula and where you can see all the yellow are the ranching operations, right? So that's a good portion of the park, the 30%. Wow. And these orange lines are actually the elk, the free roaming elk habitat. So the, the final plan that Floor was talking about that just got released where they're going to shoot the, the native free roaming elk, they're really concerned with this small herd of about 124 animals. Some of the Limitor herd might be shot, but the water issue, I don't have any photos of that, but the water issue takes place up here in this peninsula called Pierce Point Peninsula. And this line right here where there's ranch territory, in the gold and then this green territory is the preserve. There's about an eight foot fence that um, separates these two areas. And on this side of the fence is the largest population of tule elk in the world. There's, um, I don't maybe about 400 elk there, 430 elk there right now. And in 2000, around 2014, um, during the height of the drought, there was about five, hundred and half the elk died. So about 250 animals died due to lack of access to water and lack of access to healthy forage because um, this used to be an old ranch and there's actually no perennial streams in this area. And the main water source comes from old stock ponds for the old cattle ranchers. And so when drought season comes, those water sources dry out. And so the elk can't leave the peninsula to find water. And so in that time in 2014, half the herd died. Uh, meanwhile, the free roaming herds grew in size. And meanwhile, all the 6,000 cattle on the, in the national seashore had plenty of water. So that was a huge uh, negligence on the park. And right now, I'll stop sharing the screen now. Um, but right now, before the wildfires happened, um, we have our amazing friend, Matthew Pulveroso Klein, who has been documenting the elk in that peninsula for the past 12 years. He goes out all the time. He's been photographing and filming the elk and he's very intimate with how the elk behave and just the area in general. And 
Before the wildfires happened, he alerted our group to really bizarre findings, including um, almost all the stock ponds were dry, which means that the elk's main water supply was dangerously low. And he started to see some dead elk. Now, natural, it's a nat dying is a natural process. So that by itself is not very alarming. But when you see odd and higher amounts of death and dry ponds, it, it was like a little bit of a red flag. And so he alerted our group to this. And he started to go out more and we started to find more and more dead elk. So at that point, there was six dead elk, very weird behaviors being reported, not normal behaviors. They weren't running, they weren't bugling as much. And so we're starting to see this as a red flag that we're gonna have another mass elk die off. And so myself and In Defense of Animals and Tree Spirit Project um, started to put some pressure on the park to say, hey, um, we think you need to supply water right away or take down the fence. And the park service claimed that there was plenty of water. And when I talked to Dave Press, the head ecologist at Point Reyes, um, it became very clear that by monitoring the water, um, they were using one trail cam down at the edge of a very steep seep. And that was the only way they were monitoring the water and the elk drinking water. So they didn't, they weren't really monitoring it. And they, the park service claimed they had a contingency plan to supply water should they need to. But when pressed around what their contingency plan was, it became very clear that they didn't really have one. They said they would supply water when the seep was dry. And that would be entirely too late. So what happened was then the wildfires started and there's a big fire, the woodland fire in Point Reyes National Seashore. And so now you have a drought, you have dead elk, you have a wildfire close by, it could switch, the, the fire wasn't at the reserve, but should the wind switch, should it move northwards, the elk are trapped behind that fence. So um, for elk and in defense of animals and some other organizations organized um, a water drop and so we supplied water to the elk because the park, we were convinced that the park service was not going to do it. Uh, so a group of people supplied water uh, that has since been taken down by the National Park Service. So they wouldn't even keep it there. Um, and that sparked a really mass, uh, beautifully done protest at the fence line two weeks later, um, where we had about, was it, how many people were there, Floor? 50 people. I've actually got some images. I don't know if I can share my screen. Um, to oh, yeah, here. Uh, let me make you a co-host, Fleur, and then, I, and then you can share your screen as well. Because I, I did see some of those images, and they really are quite striking. There you go. Uh, all right, I'll try and pick the right one. Here you go. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, let me try and show you. Um, there's, we actually have a video of the water drop. I don't know if you kind of want to see um, a bit about that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Diana says, yeah. <laughs> there are more cattle just is, um... in this section of land designated as a national seashore than there are tule elk in the world. I started seeing articles about plans to kill the elk on behalf of the cattle. Apparently some of the elk were showing up on ranch lands and were supposedly creating a threat to the ranching business by eating grass and damaging fences. Some native animals were being presented as the bad guys. What were these private ranches doing on the public land of a national seashore in the first place? So just so you know, this is part of an amazing film um, called The Shame of Point Reyes. And um, I really encourage everyone who's interested to go and watch this film after because it really lays out a lot of very shocking information about the seashore. Um, and later you'll see uh, the water drop. Um... On the topic of water, one of the sadder stories I learned was that of the elk die-off during the 2012 to 2014 drought, during which the fenced-in animals were denied access to water. This was justified because droughts are naturally occurring events and animals die off in such events. I would argue that animals aren't naturally prevented from being able to move to water sources. 
The same dry conditions that are driving wildfires across Northern California are putting a special California species, the tule elk, at risk. In last evening's fog, I spotted a herd gathered around their water hole, but it's bone dry. In fact, most of the water sources for the elk at the Tamales Point Reserve have dried up or are very depleted. And if a wildfire starts in the reserve, the elk can't escape. They're penned in by this cattle guard and an eight-foot fence that runs from Tamales Bay to the cliffs by the ocean. The advocates tell me the Park Service is more concerned about keeping the elk away from cattle ranchers than doing what's best for this California native, and that is allowing them to roam free. They shouldn't be locked up in a place where there isn't a perennial stream that can provide them water in a safe sense. There's a fire burning right ahead of me. Um, Point Reyes is closed down. The whole sky is filled with smoke. It's orange and um, it's pretty scary. We are following a group of activists who are very bravely going to give water to elk who are trapped by an eight foot fence on a peninsula. These brave activists are risking um, their own personal freedom, they're risking arrest, they're risking fines, potential jail time in order to save um, this amazing species who are hanging on to life by a thread and they are going to be carrying water by hand to save these Thule Elks lives. The NPS sadly has decided to do nothing about it so far. They say they have a contingency plan. Um, we've asked them to put that contingency plan into place. They have not. <laughs> just check in with you and tell you how it went. It went really, really well. The short story is we have um, two troughs filled to the brim, out there, away from sight, no rangers in sight, no one knows we've come and gone. We are at the end of a very long day and I am happy to share with you that it has been a huge success. The activists were able to get water in for the elk and so now moms and their babies have some water um, for just a couple more days. So I'll just, I'll just stop it there. Um, so it's, you know, obviously we were all very, very happy um, to have finally given some water to these elk who were, as you saw in that film, as um, Diana describes, dying there of thirst because these stock ponds have gone dry. Um, so it was it was really crushing when the NPS actually removed those troughs. So at the first stage, we we believe they were negligent in um, preventing the firstly putting up a fence to prevent animals from accessing water. Second, failing to provide um, water to trapped animals. Third, actually actively removing water from animals who need it to survive. So, I mean, any benefit of the doubt is completely gone at this stage. And then after that, then they released their plan. They upped the ante and said that they're going to, you know, expand farming and start shooting the elk. So it's very clear what's what's going on here. There's, um, you know, unfortunately, the this is what we're seeing across the country. This administration has, um, shown that it has no respect for the national parks that are put in place um, for the wild animals and to preserve um, the small part of wilderness that we have left um, and really for the American people but instead they're handing it over to for-profit exploitative businesses like ranching. It's an um, incredibly sad situation but um, I will just share the, um, Diana mentioned the fantastic uh, action we did have um, up at the fence. So our first, our first, uh, our, our, one of our recent actions, um, let me try and, ooh, I thought I saw the old tabs open here. Um, so not only did those activists um, kind of risk, you know, they, they, people really are risking themselves by getting involved in some of these actions because the Tule Elk have 
you know, the, the NPS has really showed that it's not going to be acting in the best interest of the elk. So this here is where 50 activists um, came out to uh, really just show what's going on here. We wanted to show that uh, the, this, these are the elk on one side without water, without forage to keep them healthy. And then on the other hand, on the other side, you've got the, um, the ranches and the cows just um, absolutely degrading the land. Um, so it's, we've, and then uh, just to show you one, one, one more thing, um, this was our most recent action. We had almost 300 people show up um, and you can see Diana on the podium and me there. Um, and we had a fantastic turnout and you can see just here in the background, uh, the dairy hutches with these poor little um, baby cows who are being raised to become, you know, milk machines like their moms. Um, so in, you know, incredibly sad situation. Um, that's going on there but um, really the the community is behind us and um, we just need to keep on building that um, to to do as much as we can and uh, save these elk and rewild and take back the um, national park. Yeah it really does seem like the only solution is to take back the the parkland for for what it's meant to to be that was the entire purpose of establishing the national park system in the in the first place it's absolutely egregious that this is happening. Um, if, if you ladies are up for it, we do have a few questions I saw pop up in the chat. So let me get those really quick and I'll be right back. Um, do you think a different um, political regime would make a difference uh, for what's going on here? I mean, I think certainly a different pol political regime would help. So the, the whole planning process of um, the general land management plan update it went through a several year long process about a two almost a two year process which is actually very very short for an environmental impact statement um, to be conducted in normally they take um, they could take upwards of 10 years and so the trump administration with their very anti-environmental stance and privatization of public lands have um, purposely sped up a lot of these public processing to be done very, very quickly. So that for sure has hindered the cause because this process that should have taken upwards of 10 years to really do more in-depth stuff, to really create the time um, for other experts to come in and weigh in, that was all cut really short. And so now we're in this final phase. And of course, the final plan got released a couple of weeks ago. So it's potentially going to be finalized in this administration. And we are doing everything we can to delay the plan to be signed so that it, you know, maybe we have a, a better shot at uh, making some changes. So it, we're definitely coming up to the wire here. And, and we do think that if the plan gets signed, it will be sued. But of course, a lawsuit under this administration is not going to be, um, a, a, it'll be a harder. So I do think a better political regime uh, will help. Do am I hope? Do I think we're? I don't know what the election is going to be like, so I'm not as concerned with that. I just think it's important for us to keep moving forward and keep pushing for the freedom of the elk and to restore the coastal prairies and to protect the public lands and to fight the climate crisis and the biodiversity crisis, regardless of what political regime we are in, because um, this isn't political. This is um, all life on, on the planet, and we're fighting. So uh, we need to be fighting for this regardless of who's in office. And that's so true. And I, and I do want to make a, a note that we all are parts of uh, nonprofit organizations that are nonpartisan. This is merely a topic on, uh, you know, which, which organizations, which, uh, which political regimes are uh, more or less favorable towards uh, wildlife and um, protecting the park services. I just wanted to put out there that none of the organizations represented here are partisan in any way. Um, but uh, that being said, I have had a few questions. What actions can people take? I know that they can go uh, to the IDA uh, uh, website. I know there's uh, several uh, action items. If you wanted to talk about a couple of those, that would be great. 
Yeah, so um, so we do have a couple of open actions. So the first one, um, I believe, if you go to the IDAUSA.org site and you search for elk or you put in slash elk, um, you'll get to one of two um, actions. One is um, contacting uh, your contacting uh, decision makers about the um, about the thirsty elk and the how the the north herd um, that are trapped behind the fence how we need to get water to them immediately. They are dying right now. So um, that's a very, very, very important one. Um, and then the second one uh, we published right after the um, this awful um, plan was unveiled to start shooting elk as well. So there's two, there's two issues at play here. Um, the elk who are dying of thirst in the drought and then the elk um, who are going to be shot in the south of the park. Um, so those are two very important things. Um, I would also say just um, you know follow um, follow for elk, follow um, in defense of animals, and you will be kept updated with all of our actions. We are we seem to be um, uh, constantly in the process of either planning an action or carrying out an action. Um, so it's it's been a very hectic time, and in fact, um, I believe uh, Christy, your wonderful partner, helped create these excellent. <laughs> wearing right now I must uh, give that some credit to free the elk yeah and we're actually going to be momentarily giving one of those away as our raffle prize so so thanks to thanks to IDA for contributing a little raffle prize because I know folks watching this are going to be interested in in sporting that tea to support the cause and I do uh, had I had one more question do you have the elk can I add one more uh, thing to the actions oh yes please do so um, we're asking people right now to, to contact Gavin Newsom because he just laid out uh, his plan to protect 30% of coastal and, and wildlands left of land conservation. So if every, I think right now is like a really important time for him to step in and say, if I'm gonna be protecting 30% of California water and land conservation, then I'm gonna start with Point Reyes National Seashore and get the park service to reject their final plan. So that's on the Fort Elk website. That's on the IDA website. Um, contact Gavin Newsom. We have other people to call too. Um, but yeah, just really keeping the pressure high. And, um, one and other because thing the need is immediate too. Mm -hmm. Sorry, one other thing is, of course, I, I don't need to tell anyone on this um, on here, but um, boycotting products um, that are made in the seashore, um, in fact, boy boycotting all dairy products, but um, Strauss, um, Clover, uh, Nicasio Cheese Company, um, Cowgirl Creamery, all of these companies are buying dairy from the seashore. Um, so please tell, tell your friends and family, like if they, if they, you know, kind of roll, roll their eyes when you start talking about plant-based diets and veganism, this is a very tangible way that you can say these so-called ethical companies that, you know, are directly trying to kill native they are killing native wild animals so it's a really nice um, segue into veganism and in fact i believe um the seashore was the reason that you went vegan right diana that's right yeah i went vegan after seeing the tule elk <laughs> that was like my turning wow longer story but yeah so that was your gateway into veganism yeah it was and as we as we were talking about uh with the with the plant-powered brothers earlier um it, it can be anything those little those little seeds of compassion those little seeds of love um it can be anything and you never know you never know what's going to get you to widen your circle of compassion and i think it's it's so important to know that um like once your eyes are open to those things how much um uh, bigger and more of an impact you can have when you are vegan it's it's not just um it's not just not supporting uh, factory farmed, you know, the killing of factory farmed animals, the actual death and torture of, of factory farmed animals. It, it's actually the impact that they have on wild animals as well. As you both mentioned, it's, it's a really important aspect of, of the entire thing. Um, and I really appreciate you both working so hard on behalf of the elk and, and bringing this issue to everyone's attention, because I think you're right. I think it's something that not a lot of folks are aware of. It's an important issue. It's it's a tragic issue, and it's something that we can actually do something to stop. It's it's unnecessary death. It's unnecessary destruction of a native species that is 
that is, uh, you know, their, their numbers are dwindling and there's only so many of them left. We've got to do what we can to save them. Thank you both so much for participating tonight. We really appreciate it. And uh, we do have a link to uh, for elk and we have a link to IDA on our vendors page of our website, um, sfworldvegfest.org. So if folks wanna check out more information there, they can go there or just go directly to the websites themselves. And, uh, and thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it, ladies. Uh, Keep up the great work. Thank you so much. You're work our hardest. We'll check back in with you soon and we'll definitely be sharing information on future actions on our social media. Thank you so much, Christy, we appreciate it. Thank you, have a good night.